Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along. Thanks for your attendance. So I'm pleased to see some of brave the weather tonight. Um, haven't got washed away. Just saying to Sean before, uh, when I left work, it was fine. I was on the southwestern here, saw the size of a Q's in the tunnel, so I thought I'd go by the weather to be Windsor. Windsor New England, and the heavens opened up and it was just as bad as night and you couldn't see anything in front of you. And then by the time I got to the other side of New England, up Great North Road, it was dry, there'd been no rain at all when I got home. And said, uh, I said, what's the weather been like? We had much rain, so we haven't had any rain at all, and yet we've been through the, the heavy storms um, just, just along the southwest of here. So you can never tell um, what's going on. Anyhow, greetings and a warm welcome, and it's my great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker a little bit later on, Jörg Barnsley, from, uh, who's the media manager for the Sydney Rail Link. I'll let Jörg to clarify his position and where uh, things are going later on. But Jörg, thank you very much for giving up the time. Welcome to have you here tonight. Right, uh, since last week, which is actually September, two months ago, uh, certainly it seems like a lifetime, a lot has happened. And of, of course, we are now able to congregate, um, sit alongside each other, which is actually quite interesting. I was actually at Armageddon over Labor Weekend, believe it or not, um, which was not over in its own right. Uh, we did have the Lego show there, so that was my excuse for being there. And uh, the crowds there were certainly um, pretty thick. And then this last weekend, I decided I'd go bush down to Oakuni and uh, pedal around the tracks and investigate a bit and of course it turned out to be the Mardi Gras which had been postponed from May. So I've seen seven Santa Clauses, eight weirs, wallies and uh, a whole lot of other interesting garb and costume and a lot of preloading and all sorts of activity going on at Coon. So, uh, um, but I did see the Northern Explorer going through and it did actually have quite a few passengers on it so um, things are beginning to return to uh, the new normal um, at the present time. Right, obviously, uh, we had our annual general meeting on October the 10th. Thank you to those of you who attended. And of course, as you will have read in your uh, yarn, the new committee has been elected. And uh, pleased to advise that Neil Robertson has been elected the committee member on the GBR board. And um, otherwise, we've had our first committee meeting. Things are back uh, into harness, I should say. We are having a few challenges updating the database of the club rooms. Um, so Sean and Richard and um, a few of the others are Warwick uh, getting into getting things sorted out there. So um, we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, more importantly, it's uh, hard to believe that in March uh, at the Glenbrook and the Drawway, we were looking at possible near shutdown uh, overnight when COVID struck and we went into alert level four or trains stopped running or tour groups from overseas stopped arriving and uh, it was uh, looking fairly grim. Um, thanks to a lot of the support, particularly by RES members, the COVID crisis appeal certainly helped to get the railway through, keeping the guys employed and getting them working on other activities during that time. And of course, the upshot was that uh, on the 12th of October, uh, the train departed from Glenbrook through Pukki Koei on our Grand North Island Rail Tour for 12 days, uh, setting quite a few records in terms of our own rolling stock, our own locomotive, our own train crew, and particularly our own driver, Tim, as far as uh, Awakuni and return. And uh, also we had the power van on, so we could actually keep and insert hot teas and coffees, microwave ovens, oh, sorry, microwave pies, and generally keep people fit. So the two tour groups, the Opportunity Travel and the Railway Enthusiast Society Travel Groups uh, traveled on the train for the 12 days, or the Opportunity on the way down to Wellington. We did two side trips when the train was empty uh, in Hamilton down to Tamanui and back on the Wednesday. Had a full train of 300 passengers on that one and similarly again on Friday from Aokuni to Talmanui and back. Uh, so the locals are certainly, um, were very interested in the train. Um, I was in Aokuni, sorry, Talmanui on Saturday. They've just launched their own radio station, Main Trunk FM 88, and uh, they were playing it on the main uh, plat platform and uh, footpath, and uh, I indicated something, oh, well, we had a train down here. Oh, you're the yellow characters. Yep. 
Uh, so the yellow carriages certainly do make an impact. And um, I got back to my backpacking route, staying at uh, Errol and Backpackers uh, overnight on Saturday night and talking to the owners there. Uh, they said, oh, we saw the yellow train go through the other week. I said, oh, that was us. So we have made an impact and uh, certainly, hopefully, long may it continue. Uh, likewise, out of Glenbrook, we've had uh, an American, a major American film company uh, filming for quite a few days, uh, certainly some very interesting moves. Likewise, there have been some other smaller charters happening out there, and um, I'll get John just to give a couple words on uh, what's been going there in the last uh, week or two. Thanks, John. Uh, okay, the, um, despite what you might think by looking at the, the yarn, uh, Steve is actually active out there. Um, we've, uh, uh, we've now run the uh, 480 on four days, and uh, we ran, ran quite very successfully over the uh, long weekend. And uh, a couple of weeks before that, we did a, a one-day film charter, um, which mostly involved just sitting around, but however, um, about a, um, a Mary activist lady or something. But anyway, that'll come out. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, so that was good. Um, we've, um, we're still plugging away at uh, uh, Loco 644, WW 644, uh, and um, it's proving a lot more than I thought, actually. We're finding a lot of uh, problems, not problems, but uh, things that need attention with the running gear and uh, suspension and all that sort of stuff. However, there's a good team there, and we, every Wednesday, and uh, we have a good team, and, uh, and Saturday. Uh, so, um, so that's good. Um, we've now got a roster out for the, uh, the running season, and uh, it's um, we'll go through a quiet period until uh, uh, December when the Christmas light things start, and then uh, from from Christmas onwards, it's just about every day. It's all on. So uh, same as last year. Um, I'm particularly involved in the parlor cart. And that was very good, as was indicated in the uh, in the yarn. Uh, we were just about full on several trips, and um, last last weekend on on the long weekend. Uh, so that was good, and that's going to be running now. Um, well, lots of days. It's a dozen days over over the shutdown period, which is good. Uh, we've got a couple of young helpers who are helping out on that. They're, they're good. Um, but other than that, um, we had a good. Um, Staff training day, uh, very well attended. Everyone was there, and um, we. Um, uh, it's good to see uh, a lot of the people now coming back. It's a shame they weren't there during, the, you know, when we needed their help. But as soon as the steam engine comes, they all tend to turn up. So, uh, so that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it leaves the old, leaves the old bugs to keep them going, you know. So, so, so anyway, so it's all happening out there. So uh, it's very good. And, it's very pleasing to me because 480 goes like a rocket. Terrific. Good on you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Right, just uh, repeating here yeah, Christmas lights, trains at night, uh, 11th to the 13th and 17th to 22nd of December, and then the holiday running from the 27th. Look up on the GBR website for the other days, and um, we look forward to seeing you out there. And then, of course, uh, we're just in the process of planning. Another rail tour in April 2021. Uh, currently, the working title is East West Rail Tour. Uh, we'll get us down to Napier if we're not uh, floating away by that stage. Um, Masterton, uh, New Plymouth, and uh, Palmerston North, and uh, certainly a couple of days in each of those towns, which will be good. Um, John is uh, throwing his attention to that, and I'll probably put a tuppence worth in as well. So we'll keep you fully posted on that one, hopefully, next month. So I think that brings us up to date. And uh, of course, always more than welcome to have you all out at the GDR helping with uh, any of the work that's there. So without further ado, we'll move on to the main program tonight, which, as I say, you at Barnsley from uh, City Rail Link, and um, you have all give us an update. I think I'm correct in saying this is the largest or the biggest infrastructure project in New Zealand. We've now so large transport. Largest transport uh, infrastructure program in New Zealand. So I will leave you to update us and give us the full information on that one. So, you thank you for coming along. Welcome to have you. Well, hello, folks. Uh, thanks very much for the invitation to come here. Um, 
I work for um, City Rail Limited, which is the uh, company um, set up by the government and uh, uh, Auckland Council to deliver uh, the City Rail Link project, which is all going to change everyone's lives by the time we're finished and opened in late 2024, all going well, and no more COVID lockdowns. Um, so we're basically about half, if you look at it on the calendar, we're sort of halfway through the project now. We started construction in 2016 uh, and uh, we're due to finish late 2024. Now, I don't know how much you know about the project. I'm sort of going to give you a, a very broad uh, overview of what's going on. Uh, and uh, sort of bring you up to date with some new developments that have occurred in the last few weeks. Uh, for us, we're sort of at a transition stage for delivering the project now. Most of our work up till now has been what the engineers love to call enabling works. Uh, that means that there's been a lot of effort going into getting, um, getting all our sites uh, ready uh, for the grunty stuff, which is now about to start. And, uh, the big crossover point occurred a couple of weeks ago when our tunnel boring machine arrived from China uh, and it's now being uh, reassembled at our Mount Eden site. Anyway, let's carry on and uh, see how we go. Um, just to warn you, of course, that if you've got any questions, I am a journalist by training and if I don't know the answer, I'm just going to make it up for you. So. <laughs> Right. Okay, I'll, I'll sit down so I don't knock the screen. I hope you can all hear me. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, I don't know if you've seen this map before. Yes. You have? Yeah. Okay, so you, uh, the, uh, the blue line is the uh, existing uh, rail network uh, going down to Britomart. And the yellow line is the city rail link, which will run from Britomart up at the top of your screen, under central Auckland Spaghetti Junction, and it will pop out at Mount Eden, uh, and there it will split A to go on to the to head out west, uh, and also to head out east towards Newmarket. So that's just a brief snapshot. Three point five kilometres long. Right. So once again, uh, this is uh, another map. You can see that the um, essentially what City Rail Link will do is. Uh, Britomart will stop being a dead end station and will become a through station, uh, and it will also eliminate the need for uh, trains to go into Newmarket and then come out of Newmarket and go down to Britomart. So it'll just be a continual uh, link uh, involving all the lines on the rail network. It's pretty short, as I said, it's only about 3.5 kilometres long, uh, but it is a challenging project uh, in many ways, mainly because it is going under the motorway, under a very uh, busy motorway junction, and it is going underneath um, um, central Auckland, and soil conditions in Auckland are not the greatest, uh, and that's causing quite a few issues, and also, as you'll see shortly, uh, it's quite a steep um, drop from Mount Eden down to Britomart. There'll be um, two new stations, underground stations, Aotea, which is uh, being built um, just behind Smith and Coe uh, in Albert Street, uh, and Karanga Happy, which will sort of run underneath, um, run underneath uh, K Road. Uh, it's going to be the deepest railway station in New Zealand, about 35 metres deep. At the same time, 
uh, Britomart and Mount Eden are going to be redeveloped. Uh, Mount Eden station is currently closed and will remain closed until, uh, until the project is finished. In that Britomart, there will be two through lines for the city railway uh, and there will be two dead end stops there and one of the uh, existing platforms will be, uh, will be eliminated. Right, so just a brief overview, 3.4 uh, kilometres twin tracks connecting Britomart to Mount Eden, tunnel depth will be up to 42 metres, two new stations, as well there will be major redevelopments around the Britomart and Mount Eden stations, that will be offices, places to, other places to work and housing uh, and at the same time as we're building uh, CRL, we're also working with Kiwi Rail uh, to make improvements on the network at the Strand, Otahuhu, Newmarket and out west and that's just to accommodate the um, improved services that will happen once CRL is finished. Um, we estimate or we reckon uh, that the underground stations we had planned for 36,000 Passengers uh, during the morning and afternoon rush hours, we've now increased that to 54,000. Um, they will be the busiest stations in the country. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is uh, that second to last bullet point there. Originally the, the plan was just to um, um, have uh, room on the platforms for the existing six uh, carriage trains. Uh, we've now extended the platforms. Remember last year we, uh, we, uh, we announced that we had gone through the books again and we've increased the value of the project from $3.4 billion to $4.4 billion. And one of the reasons is uh, bigger um, uh, future-proofing the stations to accommodate those longer trains. So far, so good? So here are some of the benefits. So it'll just change the whole way the rail network um, uh, works, uh, getting rid of that Devian station at Britomart. Um, you can blame Kiwi Rail and Auckland Transport if these aren't right, uh, but they reckon you could just throw away the timetable uh, when it opens, uh, there'll be a train every 10 minutes. Um, so we've increased the capacity of the city railing, as I mentioned before, we were thinking about uh, 36,000 people during the rush hour, it's gone up to 54 in the city centre. That would be about the equivalent of putting another 16 lanes of traffic uh, into the middle of Auckland uh, to handle rush hour vehicles. It'd be that significant uh, growth in housing uh, and commercial development around the stations. Uh, City Rail Link will double the number of people within 30 minutes of central Auckland, which is New Zealand's biggest employment hub. At the same time, we're creating or we'll be employing about 15 to 1,600 people uh, at the peak of our construction. Uh, and one of the legacies of that is that um, uh, a lot of skills that don't exist in New Zealand uh, will be learned on the job uh, and so those skills will be transported to other projects once we are finished. Um, as well as the, uh, an easing of bus congestion in the city centre uh, and of course uh, the world class Auckland Rail Network will become a really attractive alternative to using the car. Half time. So once again, just another map, you can just see uh, 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 train services there once, once uh, um, is the cursor we've got? 
be a city rather than up here. It's pretty small, isn't it, compared with the rest of the, the net, network, but it's going to have a huge impact. Please don't ask me what TPH means. Trains per hour, I think. Oh, that's the existing number, I think. Trains per hour. Um, so the project is being delivered. There's a number of different companies uh, delivering the project, and I think we've got about uh, six up there, but there are more than that. Um, so the first two projects to start were Contract 1, which is Bridemart, the old CPO building, uh, building the tunnels across the bottom of uh, Lower Queen Street and underneath Commercial Bay to the Lower End of Velvet Street. That's the purple one there. Um, there's the downtown, well, what used to be the downtown shopping centre, is now Commercial Bay. And the other early contract that started in 2016 was this one here. This is the lower, lower end of Albert Street from uh, Custom Street up to Winyard Quarter on the um, Shakespeare pub on the corner there. So there were two joint venture companies involved with those projects. The biggest slice of work is this one here from Artia Station all the way out to Mount Eden. Uh, that's being delivered by a uh, what we call an alliance. City Railway and six, um, six companies are in that alliance. Three, three of the companies are uh, designers and three of them are um, constructors. And uh, Three of them are from overseas. Uh, there's a, two French companies that have never worked in New Zealand before. Uh, they're the key part of that uh, alliance. It's called, called the Link Alliance. Uh, and the big beauty about an alliance is, um, I used to work for the New Zealand Transport Agency and if they were building a piece of motorway, they'd get uh, designers in first to build that piece of the motorway and then they put that design out for tender and the constructors would come along and build whatever was put in front of them. Uh, it didn't always work out very well. I don't know if you remember when they opened State Highway 1 and 20 and that connection at Manukau where uh, the southwestern and the uh, southern motorway joined up and there were track jams for Christmas. The big, big advantage of the alliance is that the uh, designers and the constructors all sit down together right from day one and they just thrash out uh, ways of doing things better. So there's a whole lot of flexibility uh, in uh, how they deliver the project. And designs, even now, even though we've signed that contract with the Link Alliance, um, designs will change all the way through the life of the, uh, of the work that they're doing. Um, one of the other projects, this one's finished now, uh, that was just a little stormwater drain uh, at Mount Eden, um, just to uh, clear the way for the, uh, for the tunnel, uh, the rail connection there. That's where we found a tree, fragments of a tree that turned out to be about uh, 30,000 years old, been knocked down by a volcano, um, an eruption on Mount Eden, apparently. Uh, as well, um, Christmas is this little green thing here. That's the eastern end of um, the Britomart station. We'll be doing some work there with Kiwi Row, uh, just some track improvements uh, and some changes to the building there. Once again, to accommodate City Railway and the, all the extra trains. Uh, and we're also working with Kiwi Rail at the Strand at Parnell. We're finished there, but over who? Um, there's an extra platform going into the station there uh, and about 300 metres of extra line as well just to accommodate all the extra trains and there will be improvements at Newmarket uh, and possibly Henderson or even out further west than there. So there's a lot going on, it's not just a city, city centre project, there's quite a bit happening all over, all over the network.
Um, I did mention before that uh, this is one of the challenges um, for the project. This is just a cutaway, it just shows you, uh, here's Britomart down here, uh, and here's uh, Mount Eden um, up here. So it's quite a steep, um, quite a steep uh, drop or steep rise, depending on which way you go. Here's the Kalanga Happy Station. Uh, it just gives you some idea of how deep the uh, platforms will be. Um, and here's Artia here. Um, there's also a, and here's the Central Motorway Junction. Oops, sorry. We're a bit nervous about that. Once again, get, getting under that motorway, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of lanes of traffic there. Um, and also, one of the features of the city rail link is once again, it's not only just the uh, how steep it is. I think it's, I think that grade is about as far as we can go with existing railway stock. Couldn't, couldn't have it any steeper, steeper than that. Uh, and there are also will be quite a lot of sharp curves as well uh, to get from A to B. So you won't be rocketing down there at 200 kilometres an hour, that's for sure. <laughs> so I mentioned before the tunnel boring machine has just arrived from China in bits and pieces and is now being reassembled at our Mount Eden site. Uh, it's made by a German company called Heron Knet. They were the people that made Alice. Remember Alice made the, uh, the tunnel at Waterview, the motorway tunnel. Um, we have called this one by tradition, tunnel boring machines, um, have to be named after a notable woman. Uh, and that's in honor of St. Barbara, who's the patron saint of people who work underground. So we had a nationwide vote earlier this year and our machine will be named, or is named, Dane Fina Cooper after the uh, Maori activist. Um, this, is very, this is about half the size of Alice, by the way. Alice, the very front here is called the Cutterhead. Um, Alice is, was 14 metres in diameter. This one is seven. And that's because it's just, Alice was uh, making a tunnel wide enough for three lanes of traffic. Uh, ours is just, um, is just um, making a tunnel for one, for one railway line, even though it's doing it twice, of course. These are very clever machines. They actually do three jobs underground. One is they cut through the spoil here. They manage to, um, get all that spoil to the surface. Um, and the third thing a tunnel boring machine does, as it goes, it lines the tunnel with segments of concrete. We think uh, Alice will, uh, sorry, we think Dame Fina Cooper will do about 32 metres a day. No, oh, here it goes. Look, there it is. And you see the red line there? That screw is taking the soil from the front onto a conveyor belt and then out to the surface. It's all electric. It's all electric. It's about 130 metres long. So it's longer than Alice, but not as, not as big. That's the shield. And there it's mining, putting the concrete segments on the tunnel as well. So what, when it does that, when it puts the segments up, it stops excavating, puts the segments up. I think there are seven segments in one complete circle. Uh, then it just uh, uses those segments to uh, push itself forward and do a bit more digging. So what will happen with our TBM? It's going from Mount Eden, it's only going as far as our tier in the middle of town. Uh, that's because we've already built about 800 metres of uh, tunnel up from Britomart. 
So what will happen is when the tunnel boring machine gets to our tier, that front section, the cut head here, will be lifted out of the ground, put on a truck, uh, and then taken back to Mount Eden. Uh, and in the meantime, the rear sections, which they call gantries, I think it's about four of them, and they have all the all the guts and bits, you know, all the oil and um, hydraulic stuff and ele uh, electrics and stuff like that. They'll be pulled back through the tunnel, back to Mount Eden, and then they'll be hooked up again to the front of the machine, and away she'll go for the second drive. <coughs> As I say, we're about to, um, we're putting everything together at Mount Eden now. And tunneling will start with the TBM uh, next April. It will take about nine months to get uh, to excavate each tunnel. Um, will it be venting <coughs> underneath? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there'll be um, no, oh, yeah, there'll be air pumped in there. Uh, there's also rescue chambers uh, if. Uh, if there's a floor, oh, thanks very much. Talk and try some lunch. So it's, it's like there'll be about 12 or 13 people working on the machine. It'll go 24 7. Um, and uh, if it's like anything like the machine Alice at Waterloo, I mean, the guy just sits in the control cab. And he's um, all he does is just it's like a computer a keyboard, he just presses a couple of buttons and uh, uh, just to keep it on track. It's a, it's a pretty uninspiring job, actually, it's quite boring. Um, but oh, sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> um, but as well, you know, if, if, if there's an accident underground or anything like that, there are rescue chambers. On the machine, they can stay in there for several days if they have to. Um, and as I said, all the electrics and all the other stuff, that, all the grouting and all that sort of stuff that they need is carried on those gantries at the back. So this is the this is the cover head. Uh, this is taken at the uh, factory in China. Um, so I've told you everything there, and it's all there. Uh, it's got three jobs. It's excavation, removing the tunnel spoil, and installing the precast concrete panels that will line the tunnel walls. Nine months for each drive. Uh, you can do 32 metres a day, working 24-7. The diameter of the tunnel is about 7.15 metres. Um, the whole thing weighs about 910 tonnes. I have to say this, I've been told to say this, that's roughly the combined weight of nine blue whales. Total length of it is 130 metres, the rugby field's up to about 120. Uh, it's built by the German here in Connect company, um, and it's named Dame Vina Do you know what it's made of? Uh, steel. Really It'll stop from time to time. Quite a bit of maintenance while it's working underground. Those um, those little white bits there, they'll, they'll need to be replaced. They'll, they do all the actual cutting of the soil, uh, so they'll need, they get worn down and need to be replaced. Was that specifically designed to suit the Auckland? Yeah, this is just built for city run on. Right. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they're quite fragile soil, that, uh, particularly in the Mount Eden area. Uh, so it's just designed, um, just designed for that job. Um, and one of the things is that tunnels all over the world have different diameters as well. And, um, uh, well, that would be your story. Oh no, I think it just carries on. Yep. Yep. Um, what will happen when it's finished, and I'm just going back to the experience with Alice, um, 
they are they do salvage some of the uh, some of the parts, uh, particularly that, that red line. If you remember that uh, the screw that um, uh, removes the spoil up to the surface, things like that can be reused in other machines. But generally, it's a it's a unique machine. It's uh, it's built for for us and. Basically, that's it. Well, no. <laughs> so probably different soil conditions again. There. And they might do what they did in Sydney, might they? Just drop a tunnel on top of the sea bed. Um, this is just to show you where the tunnel boring machine is going. Here's our tier here. And here's Mount Eden. Is that right? Doesn't look right to me somehow. Yeah. Eden Terrace. Oh, I see here. There's the, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, that's where the, uh, the CRL heads east. So the TPO tunnels have a 3% gradient and the tightest horizontal curve is 140 metres. I hope you people know what that means. Height from the surface to the tunnel crown varies from approximately 8 metres to 35 metres, depending on where you are. Um, so, it's not just about building the tunnels, there's quite a lot of effort going into uh, leaving places where we have been working in a much better condition than what, they, what we found them. So, Britomart, I, th I think I told you there'll be one, one of the five platforms that exist now will go, there'll be two dead-end platforms and two through platforms. I don't know if you've been down there lately now, but they've changed all the escalators. There's been a lot quicker. Uh, um, there's four of them now, I think. Uh, and there's further work to be done at Christmas at the eastern end, the far end of the station. Outside in front of the CPO, um, which is still being refurbished by us, it'll, it'll be restored to a station um, when we leave next year. But uh, vehicles have been banned from the lower, lower end of uh, Queen Street and it will just become a pedestrian plaza between Custom Street and Key Street. So it's going to be a very good place to meet people. Close to all the transport uh, links, buses, trains and ferries. We've just finished our contract in Albert Street, the C2 contract. That was our very first contract that we started in 2016. Um, I, when I came to Auckland about 20 years ago, I used to live near Albert Street. It was a pretty scungy uh, street back then. I don't think it changed much, but we have certainly spent a lot of money refurbishing the street. Um, it's much more attractive now than it used to, that's for sure. And that's going to be repeated everywhere we go. That sort of, they call it urban realm works. It just means improving um, facilities for people at, uh, at street level. All that bit of Albert Street, we can look down and see the tunnels at the moment. Is that going to be covered up or not? Um, it's covered. Well, the C2 contract that went from Custom Street up to Winyard, that's all covered in now. But there's more. The link last carrying on from Winyard up to the ATS station. So there's about another 150 metres of tunnel to be built. And then the mix up of the station, which they're building there as well. So. Uh, this is what the ART station will look like. 
So it's on the corner of Albert and uh, Victoria and Wellesley Streets. Um, they're using quite a unique way of building the station. They're actually putting the roof on first and then they're going to excavate underneath the roof. Take all the spoil out and then build the platforms. Uh, and by doing that, they sort of reduce the, uh, the time that tra traffic on the surface is disrupted. Um, so they get, in, get in, in and out uh, a lot quicker. One of the features, and we've already won some international uh, awards for this, uh, uh, we do have quite a um, close ties with um, Tamaki Makara Iwi, and they've been playing quite a big, um, big role in helping us design the stations uh, to give, give them a very unique uh, New Zealand feel. Um, and you can see that from the, um, um, from the ceilings there. Um, uh, I think elsewhere at Aotea there will be um, lights of the ceiling representing um, Matariki and things like that. And above, uh, I don't know if it's maybe here, uh, so here's the station here. So there's a big office block planned to be built over the top of it. So this won't be a deep station, it won't be deep like Kananga Happy, but it will be an underground station. Uh, this is Kalanga Happy. Uh, as I said, this is the deepest station in, uh, in the country by the time we've finished. Um, so there'll be an entrance in Mercury Lane and another one on the other side, on the north side of K Road and Beresford Square. Once again, unique designs and patterns uh, will be used in the building of that station. What's happening there now, we're just uh, at Mercury Lane. Remember the old food court? I can't remember what it was called now. The Mercury Food Plaza. Um, well, that's gone and we've rented that land and we've sunk a shaft about 18 to 20 metres deep. And at the bottom of that shaft, we're drilling or mining a, um, a small tunnel so that we can get to the starting point where we will start excavating all the soil to build the stations and the platforms. And one of the things they've done there, because it's, a lot of people live around the area and a lot of people work around the area, above that big shaft, We've built an insulated noise shed just to cut down the noise from the construction work. So, less of a nuisance. Uh, and here's Mount Eden. Uh, once again, uh, there'll be a lot of, uh, um, quite a lot of complicated work here because we've got a Thai city rail link in with the um, with the existing Western Line. Uh, so it's going to be a bit like New Lynn. I think there's going to be a deep trench uh, put in. So there'll be four lines at, at Mount Eden um, where the uh, where Sierra meets up with the Western Line. And once again, um, once again, um, a lot of development around the station as well, just to make it a much more attractive place to be. Uh, the designs here, we've, uh, the Australians are very, uh, very impressed with our designs for the stations. This is, uh, this represents the uh, Mount Eden volcano. It's meant to be a basalt wall, um, and there's water. There's going to be water running down it as well. So, just to repeat that, so this is, uh, this is what the front of the uh, CPO is going to look like in the lower Queen Street. 
Um, it's going to help transform the city in more ways than one, not just how we get around, but where people live and where they work as well. And that, this is the, um, this is the Finnish tumble, tunnel under Lower Albert Street. It's about 600 metres there, getting up towards the Winyard uh, Street. Well, that's about it, folks. If you need any, if you've got any questions, I'll hang on. Oh, no, it'll be sealed there. Yeah. I'll oh, seal it. Water, 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 water. As, much, as much as engineers can seal anything. Yeah. 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 I see there's a bit of water there now. Yeah. 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 I mean, one of the challenges they had at Britomart when I mean, they were building the, building the tunnels underneath Lower Queen Street, you're right, you know, there's the, the harbour's only 30 metres away. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the challenges was just dealing with the tides. And, uh, uh, but I hope they've got it right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, with the, um, the recently released uh, findings that suggested rail tunnel was the first priority to go to the shore, in the tunnels with the sea rail, has there been provision allowed for lines to branch up that for the North Shore or not? This guy allowed them. <laughs> Is this my <laughs> What a question. Um, I think I think in an ATM, I think there is a I think there is strengthening that's going to be there because if there's any connection with the North Shore, that's where it would come in. I remember years ago at um it brought every year on what you know on what the, a future harbour crossing would look like and it was gonna be um, two tunnels. Top half would be rail and the bottom half would be road. One going north and one going south. And there was going to be a station in Gold Street in the Winyard Quarter, I think. And then it would come into town. But I think the latest thing here is just that rail tunnel now, isn't it? Yes, yeah, that's like going. I was just talking about how, you know, whether there had been provisions within the loop there. I, do, I remember when Waterview started, you know, and it was real groundbreaking stuff. We've never done anything like that in New Zealand before. But now tunnelling is, is quite a cheap option for, you know, building things. And, um, Maybe they decide what they're going to do with the stream oil, where it's going to be going. Uh, got three questions to get to it, eh? <laughs> um, I think they're still working on that. I think a lot of it's probably going to go down south to, to a disused quarry. Um, or it might go, I think they're still talking about Three Kings as another place. Yeah. But I, don't, I think they're still figuring that one out yet. Yeah. What's the best option? Where are they going to use it to the very, very strong? I don't know. They talked about that way back. Did they? You wouldn't be able to do that now, would you? Right. Right. I think it's called the Green Party. No, I don't. I don't think there's a definite answer. I can't give you a Well, no, as I said before, it's, it's a unique machine. It's just unique to City Rail. And there'll be a whole lot of other factors that will that will uh, decide. Maybe that it can. I don't know. But if soil conditions are different, or yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we've got a contract to build a tunnel under the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, the same thing will happen here. I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It won't come out as it won't come out of soil. It'll come out as a sludge. It'll be like yeah. um, yeah. grey-coloured toothpaste. Yeah. yeah, it'll have all these, and that's to keep uh, that's a sort of health and safety thing to keep any dust down or any 
the spaces and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yes, two, 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 two separate tunnels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Is that on? They're pretty. Um, I'm just. We can't see, but no, there's. Um, yeah, so the TBM will do two, two separate drives. Um, here. So th these are. These are the tunnels that TBM will excavate. So there's a bit of a split there when they get to uh, Karanga Hathi. You can see this is why they're nervous, so uh, just here. So how far under the highway are you? Oh, I'm not too sure. I don't know if that showed up on that. Uh, um, Well, there's, there's the South Central Motorway Junction there. I don't quite know. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see Remember, there's a lot of weight though, on the surface there with all the concrete we reinforcing. These stations that yeah. are down there, will they be leveled through the station and then as they are drawing on? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I assume so. Yeah. 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 Okay, I've got any more questions for you? Excuse me, sir. Yeah. I'll ask a question, please. Yeah. This tunnel is beautiful machine, but from that evening, you're going to get a lot of rock. How's it going to get through? No, I think it's designed for that. Oh. They don't tell it. Over the, part of the preliminary work is that they have drilled thousands and thousands of test boreholes along the route of the tunnel. So they've got a pretty idea, good idea of of what's what's below ground, and so that machine was designed to deal with all that. Yeah, yeah, but they can they can they can replace those. Um, they can replace the the cutter bits at the front of the machine. Don't forget, tunnel boring machines. You know, they do thirty six kilometres under the Swiss Alps, so they're pretty uh, pretty tough tough machines. I think I think the real concern here is that, uh, particularly at Mount Eden, the, the soil is is, um, is quite soft. That's what the, the, the big worry is. They're just about to start mining the first 50 metres of the Mount Eden tunnel, um, and that's just so that they can fit the tunnel boring machine into there next year. Uh, and there's quite a lot of reinforcing going into that. Uh, First 50 metres. But these guys, uh, the, particularly the French guys, uh, you know, that's that's their livelihood. There's guys there that have you know, built metro tunnels all over the world. A lot of expertise. What I haven't talked about actually about is that we have been impacted quite a bit by COVID. Um, when the Link Alliance made its bid for that big contract, uh, in that in that bid they said uh, they would need 200 workers, international workers, uh, on site because those workers had skills not available in New Zealand. Now we've had a hell of a job getting some of those 200 into the country partly because of the border controls, but partly too because there are no flights to New Zealand. We had one guy from France who made seven attempts to get into the country uh, and he just couldn't, couldn't get here in the end. And on the other side of the problem is this, the international workers that we do have here now, they can't go home and see their families because they can't get out. We were very lucky during that lockdown, when they had the 28 day lockdown at the beginning of the year, we had 800 people, even though there was no construction work, we had 800 people working from home, doing design work, getting consents ready, 
rejigging all the construction programs so that um, when things restarted, we were pretty quick out of the starting blocks. In fact, our boss would say that we've done better than most uh, most big uh, infrastructure projects in New Zealand and being able to carry on. Um, since New Zealand is a rather volcanic country, do you have earthquake provisions? Um, oh, I think that, yeah, that's, that'll be included in the design. Um, I think I told you before that we, when we were digging a new water main at Mount Eden, we came across a tree that had been bowled over by a volcano about 30,000 years ago. Um, uh, and that was before even Rain Toto was born. Uh, so, yeah, I think they're aware of all those issues. Yeah. Well, I think, well, that's a bit of a disaster for anyone in New Zealand, isn't it? It's, uh, it's a fact of life. We, it's a country do it on two, two uh, tectonic plates. You'd be pleased to know near the Britain Art Station there's a cafe called the Shaky Isles. <laughs> hey, that's right. Oh, I think that's the same anyway. Yes. Just, uh, I, I grew up in Upper Hutt and I can remember them building the uh, tunnel under the Rima Tuckers and um, three or four people would build it there with a the landslide and uh, I've been through it a couple of times and I always get a bit nervous. It's a bit of a long ride. I mean, one of the things, I mean, there are lots of, when they fit out the tunnels, there will be lots of safety features you know, for buyers. There are um, every few metres there'll be a uh, cross passage so people can um, um, go from one tunnel to the other. And it is electricity, you know, so there's probably less risk of fire, I guess. I don't know. The ventilation shafts. Robbie, a member of the club? Yeah, yeah it was, uh, I think these were actually done for the 1955 uh, Mac oh, uh, transport okay. thing, which is where they decided to motivate. So, and uh, this one here, um, likewise, sort of gave the overall layout, which believe not to come onto the harbour, and a train running up around, a line running up around, maybe probably right up to uh, the small bay. Yeah. Uh, with the city rail that's there, one across the north western motorway. Carrying on up, and they were south down. At that stage, it's nothing but the airport because the airport hadn't been there. Right. Yeah. And a different uh, alternative instead of coming in at uh, Westfield, coming down through Panama Road and coming out to oh, okay. later. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've doodled around and thought, well, there's a few options. Uh, <laughs> I think the thinking for the Cross Harbour is that it would sort of run pretty close to the existing bridge yeah. and go up, what's that bay up, up to? Uh, Esmond Road, I think. Yeah, Road. And it would probably, once again, I think the you know the busway there was always going to be a, uh, I think the thinking way back oh, in the day it was going to be for Metro, you know, light rail. Quite most probably can't see there is actually a dotted line leaving, uh, and of course that's showing the, uh, the uh, proposed port up uh, above the harbour itself. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, there's a dotted line here where another rail link or connection was to come right up. 
and to get on that way, it was a dotted line leaving around there and coming up there. Mm. Up this way, so. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, uh, I, um, we were looking at some documents uh, at work today and um, whatever Auckland Transport was in 2002, I think that's when they first started talking about CRL, said it could be built for half a million dollars, half a billion dollars, 500,000. Um, uh, cheaper than half the price. Because yeah. yeah. originally, but I think, the original design for this was to have another station at Newton, um, but they uh, they scrapped that to save money. You have to talk of talk of transport here, right? <laughs> Pretty steep, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I thought Wellington was hilly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Okay. Thank you very much, you. I actually appreciate it. Um, certainly, folks, I hope that's uh, given you a little bit more of an insight into what is has been happening and what is about to happen underneath the centre city and of course when it is complete we will have a world-class uh, rail system we hope uh, as long as there's no more outside uh, interference and um, we can just get on with it and uh, we've got a bit of money to pay for it i guess is the, the next thing so uh, no, excellent thank you very much okay uh, what i'll do i'll just Switch the microphone off. Because you've been so good, laughing at the right times and didn't ask me any awkward questions. I've got some brochures here. You can have your own cutting head of the tunnel boring machine. And um, there's some other stuff here about the tunnel boring machine. Keep you awake. <laughs> so, stacks of those. So, just to yourself, folks. Thank you. I'm sure people will certainly uh, get on to that. Okay, folks. Um, I have got just a few slides of the Grand North Island Rail Tour, so I'll switch over the USB sticks while we're having supper and then play those just while you're having supper in the meantime. Floyd's uh, chomping at the bit here to uh, talk about the calendar, so I'll hand over to Floyd for a minute. Last time I calendar here and there, but this is a calendar I want to do this uh, reorganisation and an excuse calendar. Oh, <laughs> very, uh, is, it, is the Rail Magazine that's gone out of business, is that right? Yeah, the Rail Fan Magazine unfortunately has ceased publication. There is a new one that has started up called the Mind Site which is being organised by, uh, uh, produced by a guy in Oneiru. So it's um, more photos and information about uh, railway uh, in some ways than the rail fan. But no, the rail fan is a great uh, publication, which is very exciting to see the overseas publication. So, uh, we, uh, still get people taking photos yet to keep on publishing uh, the covers. Right. While we're here too, um, supper tonight is a do-it-yourself to a certain extent. Uh, Ron is still gallivanting on his way back from Invercargill, mm -hmm. and um, Sean and I, well, Sean, remember, I hadn't remembered that he wasn't around, so we've got a, an impromptu one of the facts to him getting involved as well. So, Trevor, we'll just uh, pour hot water in, give the tea a few minutes to soak, and then uh, supper is served for a golf point donation. So, thank you kindly. All right, um, I think that's all. Uh, we, there will be a monthly meeting next month, December, for Auckland here as well. It will be the second Tuesday of the month. The Cambridge meeting next month will be the first Tuesday of the month prior, because obviously we're getting later in December is not good. 
So even though we're normally running every alternate month or next month, we will have a normal meeting as a Christmas thing, and we may have some bits and pieces to carry on that stage. So we will. Otherwise, uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, supper is served, and uh, maybe you.